Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. In the last episode, we started to talk about why do we need massing and some basic features about how to use a mass form and generate building elements on that mass face. Today and in the next few episodes, I'm going to show you different methodologies of how to create different types of building forms in a massing environment. Now, if you are familiar with family editing environment, you may already be familiar with ideas like extrusion, blend, sweep, swept blend, and revolve. These are the same methodologies that we're going to talk about in massing environment, but slightly with a different approach. So today in this episode, we are going to talk about how to create a building form using the extrusion approach in massing environment. So on that note, let's begin. Okay, so the first step of creating a mass is to go to the massing and site and switch on the visibility of mass. Now next is either you can create an in-place mass within your project or you can use the place mass option where you have a, already a mass created in a family environment and you load it into the project and place this in the project independently. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to use the in-place mass and call it mass by extrusion. The extrusion approach is quite a very simple approach. You create a 2D profile in X and Y direction and then give it a volume in the Z direction. So here in this particular case, my work plane is already set to level one, which is my floor plan view. So my X and Y is parallel to my floor plan view. So I'm going to create an X and Y direction of 2D profile, maybe this rectangle here. You can create any type of profile that you like. And I'm going to go ahead and 3D view to check this out. Once I have a 2D profile, I can go ahead and create a form that is going to extrude that profile in the Z direction. You have a little gizmo here, which you can use to either push and pull it in Z direction, or you can choose this particular surface and push and pull it in any direction that you like. Another interesting thing about massing is that you can also use this modify tools to modify your mass. Now let me go ahead and select my surface. If you have difficulty selecting a surface, you try to use the tab option. So it will give you alternates of that uh, selection area. I'm going to select this surface and go ahead and rotate this by about 45 degrees. And you'll see how my mass form kind of becomes interesting. I can also go ahead and select this particular surface and pull it a little bit up in order to create a skyscraper here. Not only this one particular mass, but you can also use one of these edges or the points in order to twist and turn and experiment with your mass form. So for example, I've selected this particular edge. I can push it down, pull it in X or Y direction, or also use one of these points and push it, pull it down, or I can also pull it in a different direction. So I my mass form starts getting a little bit more interesting with these kind of um, experiments. Not only that, you can also use multiple different geometries in the same mass form. For example, I go back to my level one and I create a circle maybe somewhere around here. So I have another 2D profile that I would like to extrude. And I'm going to select that and instead of this time creating a solid form, I'm going to create a void form. When you're working with circle, you have two options. Either you can extrude it in a cylindrical approach or you can extrude it in a uh, spherical approach. For now, I'm going to choose a cylindrical extrusion and I'm going to extrude it all the way up here. And you'll see that I have a cylindrical cutout in my extrusion here. I can go, always come back and change its position, move it a little bit and see where it's going to fit the most. Now this is really a little weird kind of building here, but yes, you can do these any kind of um, changes here. Once you already have created an extrusion, for example, and let me go ahead and select my void here, press tab to select it, and I can come back to the edit profile. I can select my little profile here and change the overall profile so i can say okay you are too big for my building so i'm going to change you into 10 meters and finish that i can also do that on the upper profile and i can also change you into five meters maybe i'm going to finish that so you'll see that i have changed my ex my extrusion after i have um, extruded it so you can always come back to your mass go to your 
selection and edit the profile in order to make changes to this. Let's say I'm going to make changes to this one and to finish that and the mask is going to adjust to that editing. In both of these cases, we have created the cross-section profile in a floor plan view, but that is not always necessary. You can either use the face of one of your geometries to create um, another object, or you can take help of your work planes. Let's try to use the work planes first. So I'm going to create a reference plane somewhere around here, and I'm going to set my work plane, pick a plane, to this one. And it's best probably visible in the west view. And I'm going to create a cross-section profile, maybe something not very straightforward, maybe something like this. Just random profile. So if you see here, it has created a cross-section profile on that work plane. And I'm going to create this one and create a form and increase, decrease. You can always experiment this. You can also use the join geometry in order to join these two particular um, profiles here. Now, another way of creating 2D profiles is to draw on faces. For example, let me go ahead and select one of these ellipse uh, shape. And instead of drawing on work plane, I'm going to choose draw on face. So this time, if I go near to one of my faces here, you see that it is already understanding this face as a work plane. So I'm going to go ahead and create um, ellipse here. I'm going to select that, create a void form, and increase, decrease its height, maybe a little bit more, maybe all the way down. And you'll see that I have created an elliptical void in here. Now, once I've completed my all my experiments, I can finish this mask, and this becomes one single identity. Now, you can always go to your masking inside and model by face panel. You can change one of these faces into either curtain system, roof, wall, or floor. So let's go ahead and try creating a flow, creating a wall here, maybe something like this here. And maybe in this particular phase, I want to create a garden system. I'm going to create system over here. And maybe I convert one of this top surface into a roof. And to create the mass floors, we really need the surfaces for, to select the floors. So in this case, I'm going to go into one of my elevations, then try to add more um, levels here. So maybe about 10 more levels in this direction. So I want to create a floor in all of these levels. So let's go ahead and select the mass first and create mass floors. What this will do basically is to create add profiles at each of these levels, which we can select as a face to convert it into a floor. So let's go ahead and mass floors and I'm going to say, okay, level one, I don't need a floor, but maybe from level two to level 14, I need a floor. So you'll see that it has created profiles at this particular levels, which now can be selected when we select floor by face. And I'm going to select all of these faces and create floors. Let me switch off the visibility of the mass for temporarily to see what kind of building I've created. Let's open the mass here. Now, in case, for example, if this mass changes in future, for example, I select this mass, edit in place, and I'm going to take one of these points here and increase the height a little bit. I'm going to finish that mask. Now I want my roof to adjust to this revised face. I'm going to select this particular roof and just call it update to face and it's going to update. I want to like to do the same thing with all my floors and update to face. And they have also updated. So the connection between the face and the element that we have generated from that face always remains. So always the flexibility of going back to the mass, making changes, and then taking coming back to your elements and updating them to the face. So mass by extrusion is quite simple. You have a 2D cross-section profile in X and Y direction, and you give it a form or a volume in the Z direction. So, so that way you can create a mass by extrusion and uh, experiment with your building form. In the next episode, we are going to talk about the blend approach in which we are going to create multiple different profiles and blend them together to create our form. So please make sure that you subscribe. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.